This happened back in 2004. I was 20 at the time. It was a clear spring day. I gave my friend Clayton a call. He owns a marine store and is a keen fisherman like myself. I asked him if he was up for an afternoon fishing session at the dam across from his store. I arrived at his store around 1pm. When I arrived, he asked me if I was hungry, which I replied, yes, I was. I went to grab McDonald's while he was finishing up with his last customer. I arrived back at the store to find him still busy with the customer. So I sat in his office eating my McDonald's and setting up our fishing rods. 20 minutes later, he came into his office, handed me his car keys and said, Here, you drive while I eat. It's only a three minute drive to the entrance on the other side. So we arrived, got out, grabbed our rods and started heading up to the dam wall, which is an area known to have big fish. This area is also known to be very dangerous, with junkies and petty thieves, and none of us ever go there alone. Let me add, I'm a 6 foot 3 male, weighing 160 pounds, and Clayton being 6 foot 4, 175 pounds, so together we aren't easily intimidated. Halfway to our spot, we noticed three teenage boys approaching us from the wooded area just below the damn wall. We brushed them off and carried on, laughing, joking and giving each other shits as we always did. The teenage boys approached us. You could tell by their raggedy unwashed clothes, no shoes and bloodshot eyes, they were homeless and known to use the storm water drains in and around the damn wall to conduct their dodgy gang dealings. At this point, I'm still not concerned, and gave them a short nod of the head as we made eye contact. One of them asked us for a smoke. We both said sorry we don't have, but feeling bad, I handed them my McDonald's large coke, and they thanked us, and we moved on to start fishing. We had been fishing for about an hour, laughing and ragging on each other, when I noticed that we were now the only people around. I looked around us again, and got this strange feeling in the pit of my stomach. And at that moment, I felt it's time to move on towards the car. We hadn't caught a thing, and I was thinking of moving to another dam. I turned to tell Clayton what I was thinking, when I saw him about 30 meters away, heading in that direction. So I had one last cast before I decided to follow. I then hooked into a fish. I brought it in for a quick release. I rinsed my hands and stood up to get going, and I got instant chills. The three teenagers from earlier. They were now popping out of the wooded area behind me. They had positioned themselves between Clayton and myself. I knew at this point they were up to something, and I was their target. I stood tall, shoulders back, held my fishing rod like a weapon, and started to walk towards Clayton, which meant I had to pass them. I'm watching them like a hawk, my eyes scanning each one over and over again behind my polarized sunglasses. They are in front of me now, and I'm waiting for the first move. They split, so that is to make me walk past in between them. I take a huge deep breath, and aim for the gap between them and the water's edge. I'm thinking to myself, I will not play by their rules. Three meters left. Two meters left, just about past, so I start to do a 180 turn as to have full sight of them. Suddenly, two of them jump towards me. I see a metallic shimmer and realize it's a knife. Fuck, I'm gonna die, I think to myself. But I step forward and without hesitation give him a mark Tyson to his right jaw. Down he goes. I focused just in time to block the second one from landing a job with a six inch knife with my fishing rod. At this point Clayton had heard and seen shit going down, and him being him came running in, spring landed and keen knocked the third boy out cold. Later I'd find out he was yielding a metal pole and about to end me over the back of my head. I was really in a life of death struggle with the second boy when I felt a sharp pain go up my leg as I collapsed. The first boy had come around from his daze, and laying on his back, he grabbed his knife and stabbed me in the back of my right leg. I landed in the water, and adrenaline pumping started swimming. 
I heard Clayton shouting my name, so I looked up to see him waving at me to swim to him. I did. He helped me out of the water. I looked around asking, where were they? He pointed over to the storm water drains, and I could see two other fishermen blocking the entrance to our side. Clayton said that they were watching me from a distance in their car, watching me catch that fish on the damn wall, and had seen everything go down, so they ran to assist, while calling the cops an emergency. When the three teenagers saw the other fishermen running to help, they fled into their tunnels for safety and a clean getaway, or so they thought. I am now walking back to the car, soaking wet and trying to assess my damage, and Clayton checking himself. I run my hand behind my right leg, and feeling a tear in my jeans, only to see my hand now filled with blood. Clayton bent down to take a look, and I could see it in his eyes. It was bad. Calmly saying to me, it's just a scratch, let's get to the car. He opened the trunk, and I sat in it as to lift my legs up, so it would be easier to remove my shoes and jeans, and stop the bleeding, which Clayton did in a matter of two minutes. The cops arrived and the ambulance with them. I was taken to hospital and spent a week in there. Turns out I end up with a five and a half inch deep hole in my right leg, severed my right hamstring and they had to treat my injury like a gunshot wound, having a pup shoved into the wound three times a day for two weeks and physiotherapy every day for six months. The cops captured and arrested all three of them 20 minutes after I departed to the hospital. Three months later, I had to go and identify them. I did, of course. They were found guilty, but being juveniles, they only served a three-month sentence in a juvenile correction centre for attempted murder. Anyway, I'm grateful to have survived, and I'll never go fishing ever again.